Hi guys, um, today I'm going to show you how to draw people, um, and we're actually going to draw stick people. So but it's actually really, really cool the way that we draw stick people because that will help us learn how to draw um, more realistic people, okay? So you're going to think about where your body moves, right? So we have joints in our fingers, we have joints in our wrists, elbows, everywhere where our body moves is a joint, and that's where we're going to draw from. So our neck moves, that's a joint, right? So you're gonna draw from joint to joint on a person. So hopefully you're gonna have a model standing there. Um, after I'm gonna show you how to do it first and then hopefully we'll have a model standing there to um, draw from. So we're just gonna draw stick people right now, okay? But I'm gonna draw from joint to joint. So our hips are a joint, right? So I'm gonna draw from neck to hip. My person is standing straight up but they actually look like they're running. So I'm gonna draw neck to hip, hip to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to toes, okay? Then we're gonna go back to hip. We're gonna go hip to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to toes. Now we're gonna go back up here to our neck and our shoulders. So neck to shoulders, shoulder to elbow, Elbow to wrist, wrist to hand, okay? Shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, wrist to hand, okay? Then we're gonna draw the head. And now we have a really cool stick figure, right? We're gonna do it again, okay? And hopefully this time you all draw this one with me and hopefully we'll have a model standing there, okay? But this time we're gonna draw someone squatting. So we always start at the neck, so neck to hip, hip to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to toe, okay? Hip to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to toe, all right? And this one, this person has their hands on their hips. So we're gonna go shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, wrist to hand, okay? Shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, wrist to hand, and then we need our head, okay? All right, so you guys are gonna do this one, two, three, four, five, six more times, okay? I already have my people drawn on this side, all right? But I need you to draw super duper light until you get it right, because I'm gonna show you how to do the next step here in just a few minutes. So we're gonna pause the video, go ahead and draw six more stick figures, okay? And make sure to draw super duper lightly because we're gonna be erasing them. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and draw you six more figures. Okay, awesome. So it looks like you all have got all your figures drawn. So now I'm going to show you how to draw a person in the Keith Herring style. And that's the artist that we're going to be working with today. So how we do that is we have our stick figures drawn. Okay, and this is super duper simple. You just draw around it. Draw around your stick figures. And then we're just gonna erase the inside. And then we have this really, really cool bubble person. That's why we have to draw lightly because if we draw really, really hard on our paper, then we're gonna have what's called ghost lines. And when we have ghost lines, they're lines that just kind of never go away. They're always kind of there. Um, so we want to draw lightly so we can erase really well. Okay. So kind of looks like I left one line out. All right. We're going to try that again. So you're just going to draw around your person, your stick figures that you've made. Okay. And then you erase the inside. Now, I'm gonna give you a piece of project paper, okay? Because this was just our practice. Because the more we practice, the better we get at stuff, right? So, that was just our practice paper. Um, once you get your project paper, you're going to pick at least four of your favorite poses that your friends did, okay? And you're gonna draw those on your project paper, all right? So, I already have two drawn. I'm gonna pick 
this pose right here, okay? And you can draw them in any sort of arrangement, okay? I'm gonna draw this person upside down. So this person is gonna be, I need to go, I'm drawing this one. So I need to go neck to hip, hip to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to foot. Hip to knee, knee to ankle, ankle to foot. All right, neck to shoulder, shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, wrist to hand. Shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, wrist to hand. Then I need a head. All right, the head might need to be a little bit bigger, but it's okay. Then I'm gonna draw around him. And then I'm gonna erase the inside. Okay, so then I have a really cool stick person, right? Or key pairing person. So you need to do that at least four times, so I need one more person. But then you're gonna outline your people with Sharpie. And then we're gonna make this artwork look like it's a Keith Heron artwork. So Keith Heron uses a ton of repetitive lines. We're gonna actually read one of his books while you all are working. Um, so while you all are drawing more of your stick people, we'll put one of your books, one of his books on the board so you can see some of his artwork. But his artwork has lots and lots of repetitive lines. So you're going to trace your people with a Sharpie. Then last week we learned about the color monster and what col different colors mean. So I want you to think about these shapes, okay? These people. How would you feel if you had to squat for hours and hours and hours, right? I would be kind of angry. So I'm going to draw some red lines because I think red represents anger in my eyes. Right? So I'm going to draw some red repetitive lines. Or I might be angry because when I get really, really sleepy, I get kind of angry. And I don't realize that I'm angry because I'm sleepy. Um, but I don't want to go to sleep because there's too much fun stuff to do. And my dog is too cute. And, you know, I'd just rather play with her than go to sleep. So, um... You can add tons and tons and tons of repetitive lines. Um, this one kind of looks like they're falling. And you know what? That kind of scares me because I'm really clumsy and I hurt myself a lot. So um, I'm going to use like a gray because I already, I've already used black around it. So black is kind of like a scared color. Gray is too, right? It's kind of a dark color. Maybe you could use a brown if you're scared or something. Um, this person looks like he's climbing up a wall, and that makes me think of nature. So I'm going to use some green. But Keith Haring uses lots and lots of repetitive lines. He also uses some dots and things. Um, but he fills up, like, his entire paper, and your entire paper needs to be full um, and completely colored. So if you want to make some repetitive lines and color in those lines, I'm going to add some dots and maybe some different line designs, maybe some zigzags and stuff like that. Um, this this artwork is based off of Keith Haring, but this is your artwork, right? So make it your own. It doesn't have to look exactly like a Keith Haring's artwork, because if it looks exactly like his artwork, is that your artwork or are you just copying Keith Haring's artwork, right? So, um, and I want this to be your artwork. I don't want you to copy someone else's. Because you're an amazing artist. I'm sure of it. So, um, I have some really cool line designs going on. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get some different colors just because I like them. Right? There doesn't have to be a rhyme or a reason sometimes. Sometimes, again, just because we like them. We can add some really cool dots. We can add some zigzags. Keith Haring also loved dogs. So, he would draw a dog. So, let's go the same way we do people. So neck to hips, hip to, do dogs have knees? They at least have feet joint, right? So hip to ankle, ankle to foot, hip to ankle, ankle to foot. I'm just going to draw two on this side. 
and then neck to head, head to ear, and then ear to nose, right? Oh, and then hip to tail. So then I can just trace around this. And then I have the cutest little bubble Keith Herring dog. Actually, kind of looks like a dinosaur, but don't tell anybody. Okay. So then I can add some, I love, love, love dogs. It's my favorite. So I'm going to add some pink or purple, because that's kind of like a loving color, right? So um, I would say maybe keep your figures white and color in the rest of your paper. That way that's like a focal point, but you don't have to. It's kind of whatever you want to do. Okay, so now you're going to start working. Um, make sure your paper is completely full of something, right? Um, keep your practice paper. Keep drawing, practicing on it if you want to. Um, but just have fun with it and make sure you watch the Keith Hearing story. So, all right, guys, happy making.